Hello. We are going live for Safari Butts. It's pretty much the only tutorial I'm ever going to be able to teach and say the word butts like over and over and over again. Oh, lots of people joining us already. Hello in South Carolina and Seattle. Hi to the West Coast. Hello to the East Coast. Let's see, Cali, Manitoba, Cali. Hello, I'm in London, Ontario, that's in Canada. My name is Chris and we are gonna do this acrylic painting today. Safari butts is what I called it. It was kind of a dare, I dared um, Liesl to have, uh, let me do a painting with the word butts in it. And this is the result. Can't wait to get started. We've got about a minute till noon. Um, you still have time to grab yourself a little drink, grab yourself a coffee if it's um, morning for you, earlier morning. It's lunchtime here. I've got coffee and water. We will go over the supplies that I have. Um, put on your best safari hat. Good morning to Rebecca. Hello in Toronto, hello in Florida. Kaylee says, first time, awesome. I love uh, a beginner. We are very beginner friendly here at Artist Palette Durham Region. Uh, Florida again, Wisconsin, Illinois. Awesome, from everywhere, I love that, I love that. Okay, what time is it? It is noon. We're gonna get started. Um, again, my name is Chris. We're with Artist Palette Durham Region and we're painting Safari Butts in acrylic today. Um, let's go over the supplies. Um, now we are on a live feed, this is live. However, if you need to pause at any point, you can just hit the pause at the bottom of the screen. You can go grab something, take a break, come back, unpause, catch up with us. Um, and you know, if people join like midway through, they can even set the playback all the way back to the beginning and start from the beginning. It's wonderful what technology can do, what YouTube can do, moving around the playback, even during a live. You can't fast forward though. All right, let's do supplies. If you've forgotten something, you can go run and grab it and hit pause. Um, acrylic paint I mentioned. I have this super fancy, styrofoam container. That's all that I use. I don't use a fancy artist palette. So here's the colors I have. I've got white. I've got black. Most, if not all paintings, you'll need white and black. And then I've got my three primary colors of yellow, red, and blue. Um, with yellow, red, and blue, you can make green, you can make orange, you can make purple, you can make pink. Uh, we're going to make some gray, light blue. So really, this is all you need to have stocked in your house, these five colors. Um, but if you have a set of acrylic paints where it's like all the colors and you have green, you have purple, you have orange already, you can definitely use those instead of like mixing up your own. You're a step ahead of me already. So this is what I have. Basic five colors. Brushes, thank you my little tiger friend. I've got kind of a big-ish, a kind of a medium-ish, and a, a little skinny one. Um, can you see it with all that busy stuff in the background? There we go. Big, medium, small. You could definitely get away with just having like two paintbrushes, like a medium and a small for this painting. The big one will just kind of help me fill in like the background quicker. So that's what I'm using. Round brushes are fine, square brushes, flat brushes, fan brushes, dollar store brushes, whatever you whatever you have in your home. Um, Nida asks how long this video will be on Facebook. Um, so right now we're on YouTube. Um, so it'll be forever on our, our YouTube channel page, forever. Um, what else do I have? I have a my paint rag, which is just an old t-shirt that got paint on it, so it becomes my next paint rag. Paper towel would be fine for that. And I have my cup of water to rinse the brushes. Water and a rag or a paper towel. The tiger's optional. I'm gonna move the tiger so I don't get paint on him. That would be silly. Um, 
let's talk surface. So I'm going to use a canvas, but there's this wonderful, um, if you don't have canvas available to you, wonderful thick acrylic or oil paper, like in a pad, like a sketchbook pad. You could definitely be painting this on a thick art paper. Um, I'm thinking other things like a flat rock. Um, fabric paint on a t-shirt could be cute in the future. Um, what else? Like MDF board, masonite, wood, um, maybe on a plate to make it as a decorative plate, I'm thinking. Yeah. And you can switch up these animals too. I'm going to do the elephant, the zebra, and um, that's supposed to be like a hippo. You could switch it up. Maybe you want three elephants, like mama and like a couple of baby elephant butts. Or maybe you just want a, a herd of zebra butts representing the people in your family, like big, big, small, or whatever amount of animals you want. Or just stick with one. Mix it up. Make it your own. Make the colors match like a certain room in your house, like the kids' room or something, or the bathroom. You could do only blues and purples and greens as your theme. So choose any colors you want, any order, any pattern. Ooh, think about like an ostrich butt, like a fluffy ostrich butt and stick legs and then like a skinny like head and neck. Wouldn't that be adorable? What else? Maybe do more of a desert thing like camels, I'm thinking. Yeah, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing and the exact colors I'm doing at the exact time I'm doing. Switch it up, make it your own. We love seeing those different um, compositions forming. And then I've got on my apron, put on a, an adventure apron and a tablecloth or plastic sheet or put down some newspaper to protect your, your surface area. Okay, let's say hi to some more people here. Alberta, welcome. Ohio, hello. Utah, South Carolina, more from Florida, excellent. Dorothy says the bathroom would be fun. Yes, that'd be so cute in the bathroom and like match the colors to your bathroom colors. Wouldn't that be nifty? Okay, so that's the supplies. If you've forgotten something, go grab it and we will get started. I'm gonna switch this one for this one. Remember, you can pause at any point. So if I'm getting ahead of you, am I, go am I going faster than you and you wanna Take a little break, catch up, just hit the pause. Um, I'm trying to get both of them at a good angle in the shot here. That's pretty good. So we will be doing um, like a sketch of our animals first. If you would prefer to sketch with a pencil, if you, if you have a pencil handy, you want to use the pencil to do this sketch, you definitely can. I'm going to sketch using paint which is what I like to do. So I use my small paintbrush. I'm gonna mix up a light color for my sketch. And in this case, uh, my sketch will be in a light gray because that's the base color of my background. So any sketchy lines will just kind of blend into the background. So we're just gonna outline our animal shapes first, and then we're gonna paint the whole background gray. There's gray underneath all those red and orange tones. I am excited as well, giggle gal. I like to get my brush wet. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna make gray, so get a tiny bit of black. And where's a good spot to make a little gray? Maybe right here. We're just doing like a sketch with thin light lines. We don't need a ton of this color yet. We will make a, a lot of gray for the background. So it's okay if you like make too much, let's say. Okay, nice light gray for my sketch. Again, pencil for the sketch is fine. All right, elephant is sort of in the middle. And what would you say his shape is like? Sort of like a um, football shape and then we could add legs to that. So try to find the middle. Um, maybe like there's kind of the middle. That's just like the top part of his um, spine. We call it the spine. Sketchy lines. These don't have to be like nice lines at all. Nice big 
rear end, nice big butt. Kind of egg shape, yeah, kind of egg shaped. And then for the legs, I've got one leg crossing over in front of another leg. So maybe he's walking. He or she. Come down like this. A nice wide foot pad, I guess you could call that. And my painting here will not turn out exactly like this painting here. Yours will be different at home as well. Light sketchy lines and then this leg kind of comes and kind of disappears behind that one. But if you want both of the feet visible, you could definitely do that. Sketchy lines and not really thick globby lines, thin, thin, wispy, sketchy lines. And then I will kind of pencil in, pencil in the tail. So it's kind of wide, like a V. V that comes down into like a skinny, skinny rat tail, and then it kind of swishes off to the side, but that's really all I'm gonna do for that. And you could, if you feel like you want him, him or her rounder, you can just add like, you know, add a little bit more junk in the trunk. This is all getting painted over with other colors. And then Kind of at the end, black will tidy everything up. Yeah, so mine's messy. Yours can be as messy, if not more. Okay, I'm gonna add the ear shapes. So even my ears don't even match each other. So yours don't have to be perfect copies of mine. Kind of like a lumpy, lumpy shape. Nice and big, they have big ears. Like this. Um, I think African elephants have smaller ears. So if you want yours to be like an African elephant, smaller ears, that's kind of cute. Like they're not identical, that's okay. That's fine. And use up a lot of the space. This is an elephant, it's gonna be Kind of like the focal focal point of this composition. Okay, so yeah, fine tune anything if you wanna make something thicker, thinner, narrower. That looks good. Any thick globs, just spread them smooth. These will dry very quickly. I think that's all I'm gonna do on my elephant. Yep, that looks good. And then I'm gonna do zebra and hippo. Think about, maybe do a baby elephant. Um, a rhino, but how would you show it's a rhino? Maybe like similar to the hippo, but then add like a, like a horn. It'd be a very similar butt to a hippo. Zebra, so how tall do I want my zebra? And then this head here. Something like that. I'm gonna draw the zebra butt. So like an arch, arch shape. Arch shape zebra butt. And then his, um, I guess these would be his thighs. Zebra thighs. Knobbly knees. We could even just draw like a little, little circle as his knees, but that'll get painted over with whatever color we end up with. And then skinny, skinny legs to like a, just a squared off hoof. You could call it a hoof. It just ends kind of, sort of, kind of where the elephant feet and sort of, but even even those don't perfectly line up. These won't, that's fine. Okay, a zebra head, just like another arch or um, oval. A 
egg egg shape kind of like that nothing fancy give them some ears kind of like pointy leaves leaf shape ears Every one of those. And then I've got like a bit of a mohawk situation. But that'll be painted. We'll paint that in black later. So even if we're painting like the background gray and that gets a little lost, we're putting it in black later. And then I guess that V shape of the butt tail region. Like that, and then his tail. I've got his tail coming between his legs. If you want his tail like swishing off to the side, you can do that. I actually think that'd be kind of cute. So I'm gonna swish his tail to the side. I never like to make this painting exactly like my other painting. I just can't. I just wanna make some little details different sometimes. So I've got mine swishing to the side versus kind of like straight down. Up to you. You do you. <clears throat> um, and then a big old hippo butt. Okay, like a big, take up as much room as you can here with your, your hippo butt. Um, maybe like here. Like a big, um, big round mushroomy shape. And then, so I've got some wrinkles there. I'm gonna add the feet, like really stubby, wide, as wide as you can make them, feet, legs with like wide padded feet. Kind of like the elephant. My adventure hat is making my head hot. Might have to take that off. There's those wide, soft, patty feet. Um, and then I've got like a wrinkly, wrinkly butt situation here. So I'll go like this. A curvy line there. And then he's got that very wide, wide start of the tail down to a point. Something like that. Hippo tail. And then a teeny tiny little bit of like the top of his head peeking out. Um, maybe like this, a little arch, and then teeny tiny little ears. I made them pointed, but I don't think they are pointed. I think I'll make mine rounded. Little round ears. Those seem more accurate to me. I guess I should look at a photo of a hippo, but this is my artistic interpretation of a hippo. That's not bad, that's kind of cute. I'm giving my little baby brush a rinse. That's all we need the sketching for. A little rinse, a little wipe. <coughs> I think I need to get rid of that. Here we go. I'll give you another moment to work on your little sketch. Um, but if you're way behind, just hit the pause. Hit the pause on this screen and then you can keep sketching, sketching away. See, I've taken up a lot of the negative space on the canvas. 
with my animals. So use up as much negative space as you can. Dorothy thinks that this butt is darling, which it totally looks darling. I think it reminds me of like Fantasia. It was like hippos dancing. Put a little tutu on this. Isn't that fun? Okay. So that was just warming up our painting muscles. We're really gonna give our painting muscles a workout now. We're gonna fill in the whole background gray. So it's behind all that color. Is it kind of dark? It seems a little dark over there. I might grab a light. Let me grab a light so we get a little more light hitting that way. Let me grab this light real quick. Let's see all those vivid colors over there. Boom. What do you think? Does that help at all? Is that brighter? All right, I'm gonna use my bigger brush. If you only have like say a medium brush, you'll just have to work a little, a little harder to fill in the whole thing. I like to get my brush wet. <clears throat> okay, so we make a whole bunch of gray. So I'm gonna grab some black back over to where I was mixing gray before and make a bunch. Not too dark a gray. We want to be able to paint colors on top of it. So if it's too dark, then, uh, well, that's a bummer. Light, light to medium. Give a, give a few little test spots if you like that color. Or if you have a different color in mind, baby blue, let's say. We're gonna put a bunch of brush strokes and colors on top. So it really just becomes filler. So it really could be any color. All right, so we're gonna fill in all the background. I like to use kind of like crazy brush strokes here and there, this way, that way, up, down, diagonal, crisscross, just kind of all over crazy. Sometimes I even purposefully um, have like darker bits, lighter bits. So if I wanna just grab a tiny bit of black, on my bristles and then maybe put a few like crisscross darker bits here and there really any way you want to fill in the whole background even if you go on your sketch a tiny bit that's fine you know where your sketch is you know where things are but thin even layer. No thick globs left behind. That's, that is key. No thick globbies. If you see some thick globbies, just flatten them out. Spread them out. Grab a little water in your brush too. Because like sometimes you get that kind of canvassy texture and it's hard to fill it in. Grab a little water. I just dunk. I dunk and just spread. Dunk and spread. Yeah, if there's dark bits, light bits, everything is okay here. Even if you just, sometimes I'll just grab some white, similar to when I just grabbed a little black. Maybe there's a bit of a lighter gray area here. Little tiny bits of visible canvas are okay because we're gonna put more colors on top. So if I leave like a little patch not painted, I know I can put some red on it later. So later on when we're doing all of our black outlining, if you would prefer to use a black, uh, like Sharpie, a black paint pen, instead of using just your regular paintbrush to do the black lines, you can absolutely do that. There's options if, if maybe your black lines aren't as steady. 
paint pen. They're wonderful. Some of my gray has like a little bit of a tinge of orange in it, only because it had some orange nearby. That's okay. If a little bit of, let's say you're next to your red, a little of that gets into the background, no problem. Maybe even do that on purpose a little bit. Mix it up. This is kind of like the long, tedious part of the painting, but all the rest is just a riot of colors and fun patterns. But we gotta kind of set up our, set the scene. Getting there, getting there, almost there. Would this be great for a, like a newborn baby in their nursery? Roughly filled in. There's a few little spots here and there. I could just kind of dip in the water and kind of fill in those little gappy bits. I'm using, uh, to answer your question, Suman, I'm using just a little black mixed into white, so it's a lovely gray, but any shade of gray that you want to use for yours or any other color, really, light blue. A lovely light orange. But remember that most of this is getting covered up. So don't spend too much time making the perfect color or painting it perfectly. This is filler, background filler. It's the background of the background. There, so just look around for thick globby areas and just Flatten them down. There's no paint really in my brush. I'm just flattening down globby bits with kind of an empty brush. Now yeah, there's light patches, dark patches. If you like to take progress picks, this is like kind of a prime example. You go from this to this. People be like, what? Yeah, that looks pretty good, yeah. Any little tiny patches that are giving you trouble? A little water, a little water helps. But uh, we can throw some orange, some red on top of that. There, so I'm done with the gray. Give that a good throw, uh, rinse and wipe. We will not need any more gray, unless you want gray. What if you wanna like a patch of gray on the elephant? kind of like a nod to their original color, you know? Give that a good rinse, a good wipe. I'll probably just use um, my medium and my small from now on. So maybe this guy's retired for the rest of the painting, we'll see. But he did a lot of work. He earned, he earned his keep today. 
I ought to treat my brushes to a lovely um, specialty brush soap bath soon because they're getting a little ragged. Lovely artist brush soap would do them good. All right, so if you're still feeling in your gray, just keep at it. I'm gonna move on to the colors, lots of bright colors. So different patches here and there. So on my zebra, I've got half yellow, half red. So we're just looking at the underneath colors, underneath the pattern. Head is blue, pink ear, yellow ear, bunch of greens, pink to orange to blue, couple of purples, even a teal way over there. Dark blue, any colors anywhere. If you want only pinks and purples and oranges, do it. If you just want different shades of green, anything at all that you wanna do. So just because I'm doing yellow right here right now, doesn't mean you have to do yellow right there right now. I can use my medium brush. I will do yellow because I was just saying yellow. But I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to put yellow on this side. Right here. Um, if you have like very wet gray near where you're painting curly, just try not to have them like blend and mix together too much. Or if, if that's a look that you want, you can definitely do that. Um, I'm going to mix a little white with my yellow. So maybe like half yellow, half white. It'll make it more opaque, less see-through, white and yellow. So my yellow is a very see-through brand of yellow. There's some yellow, wherever you want to stop the yellow, if you want yellow onto the tail, if you want yellow on the head. Just because my section's that big doesn't mean your section has to be that big. While I have yellow on my brush still, I might as well throw some more yellow somewhere else. Let's say I want some yellow on this later on, sure. Or anywhere else you want. The color you're currently working on. Mm, do I want more than that? Maybe like, I'll do half of this ear, why not? And mine is, mine's a little messy. Mine's a little bit messy. My brush strokes aren't perfectly smooth. Visible brush strokes is okay. If the edges look a little messy, that's all right. We're gonna put some black right along there tidies it right up. Okay, I think that's good for me for yellow for now. I'm gonna, do I wanna rinse it or do I wanna make a color with the yellow? Thinking ahead. What if I wanna make orange and I already have some yellow on my brush? Orange is red plus yellow. So here's a little bit of red, tiny bit of red to make orange. Why don't I just mix it right here? I guess I can flip it around so you can see. There we go. I just gradually add tiny bits of red, tiny, so it doesn't go too dark, too fast, or any color you wanna make. Here's orange, it's nice, kind of like um, creamsicle orange to me. Anywhere you want it, um, I'm gonna go here, sure. If you're using it to cover up any like messy lines, add a little white in it. Add a little white, that'll help you cover any little messy gray bits that you need covering. Maybe a bit of orange there, maybe a bit of orange here. Any shape, any size. but we're always doing nice, thin, even coats. No thick globs. That should be just like on a poster on my wall. No thick globs. Or I'll tattooed on my arm. That's my mantra. Do I want more orange? 
like an ear. Oh, I'll just do one ear orange. That's funny. One orange ear, why not? It's my choice. Okay, do I want more orange? Not yet. Give that a rinse. Any color next? I'm gonna go with pink. Pink, why not? If you have like a tube or a bottle of pink that you wanna use, use it. Otherwise, make some pink. I'm gonna grab um, a scoop of white, grab a scoop of red. I'm over here now. We don't need a ton. We don't need a ton of all of these colors because we're just painting a few sections at a time. And thinly, so I don't need, ever need to make much more than this. Here's a little pink, red and white. Mine's kind of equal parts red and white. If you want darker red, add more red, or darker pink, add more red. Um, yeah, really anywhere. Anywhere. Like a, is it like a Pepto-Bismol pink? Maybe I want to go down further. Okay, where else do I want a little bit of pink? Maybe over here. Save some room for other colors too. Don't don't be uh, already full. There we go. Mm, where else? The head. Why not? Head is pink. Um, that's kind of good for me for now, but we can always go back and add more of any of the colors that we've already used. What will I do next? Maybe like a lovely, nice, um, like a shamrock green, I'm thinking. So shamrock green, I'm gonna grab a scoop of this yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue at a time because the blue is very strong. Blue and yellow. Yeah, like 10 times more yellow than blue because it's such a strong pigmented color. And you could gradually add little bits of blue to darken it to your desired shade of green. That's nice, kind of like a leprechaun kind of green, Kelly green. Let's go over here. And there's going to be like patterns and things on top. So if something's looking like streaky or not like perfect to you, we're going to be distracting people's eye with patterns on top so they won't see little, little imperfections like that. There's some green. Where else do I want some green? Yeah, I covered up this tail a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to redo the tail in black later anyway, so no worries. Green, um, sure, a leg, a leg, why not? I guess, yeah, this is something I didn't do. I didn't leave any of these patches like just white. If you wanted to have like a white section you definitely could. Maybe even, especially on the zebra, have like a white section. Paint it white though, use paint. Don't just leave it naked. 
as a color option. What about, I did mention if you wanted like a patch of gray on your elephants, gray on your hippo. A little nod to their actual color. And what else, what else, what else? A little bit, I'll go right here. Green, um, yeah, that's good for me on green. I'm gonna give that a rinse. Kim asks if they can see it at another time. Of course, this is available forever on our, on our YouTube channel page. Yeah, so immediately after this live is done, it'll just it'll be posted right away. Let's go with, I need some blue. I don't have any blue yet. I'm gonna make a little bit of a slightly lighter version of the blue that I have. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white, little white, little blue. Any, any shade of blue you wanna do. Oh, that's lovely. Should we go down the tail? Yeah, I'm gonna go down the tail. some kind of shape like that. Sure. Let's go over here. It's much more freeing to just kind of pick where you want these to go instead of perfectly following what I did before. Even for myself. So I hope you guys are just kind of randomly picking places for yourself. There we go, a little bit of blue. Let's go, I did like that blue head. I'm just gonna kind of go over my whole head, even though I, I painted over the mohawk a little bit, that's all right. Okay, there's my blue head. Mm, looks good to me. Looks good for me for blue. Um, what else do I want? I do have a little bit of a lovely grapey purple over there. Purple, everyone's purples are gonna be different because we have different shades of blue different amounts of red and blue mixed together. This is how I make purple. So get some red, like a lot more red than blue. Cause again, the blue is very like potent. I've got some ultramarine blue here. It makes a lovely purple. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that. So more red than blue, mix them together. It's gonna look very dark, very dark. Do not worry. We get a little bit more blue, little bits of blue at a time. It's gonna be super dark, like wine. And you're like, that doesn't really go with my color scheme here. Then grab a little white, like, eh, I've got just a little bit of white. It's surprising how much the white changes this with just a little. Mine's quite plummy. I would say that's plummy. I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue. 
If yours is too like reddish, add some more blue. If yours is too bluish, add some more red until you're happy with it. Lighten it up with more white if you're thinking more of like a lilac color. I'm gonna grab a little white. But everyone's purples are gonna be different. And that's okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Where do I want purple? This is kind of nice. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Still see the other one? There we go. Yeah, if, if colors next to each other are both kind of wet and kind of blend into each other, that's cool. It gives you like a whole new color, a bonus color. Oh, hi. <laughs> Random hand grabbed some blue from me. That was my kid. That was my kid just stealing some blue. You know where the paints are kept. Okay. She knows. Okay, there's some purple. Do I want maybe a purple? I'll do a purple leg. Okay, well, Dad can help you pour them too, if that's your problem. Purple leg. Hmm. even coat, no thick gloves. Uh, Vicky says that they're a little late. That's okay, Vicky. You can set the playback all the way back to the beginning. Like even as I speak, as I'm live, go to the bottom, set the playback all the way to the beginning and watch the whole thing from the beginning. And we'd love to see your finished painting at the end. So in the chat, I did put a link to where you could post a photo of your finished painting. Um, so in the chat, the live chat here at the very, very top is where I put that link. Um, yeah, and then we can see each other's work, see all the different colors and animals that we used, patterns. It's always fun to see all the different variations. Good on purple. Oh, it's Nana. Nona, hello. Okay, what other colors am I thinking of? Oh, this ear is still empty. Red, light green, light blue. Ooh, teal. I could show you how to make teal if anyone wants kind of this bluey green color. Bluey green. Well, we have some blue mixed with a little white here. I'm going to add a little bit more white. So think like baby blue, medium blue to baby blue, and then add just the teeniest, tiniest bit of yellow to this kind of baby blue, medium blue, a little bit of yellow, like little. Throw that in there. And then just lightly greenifies it. Uh, DJ Mega Plays, yes, you can use crayons, pencil crayons, pastels, whatever you have at home. And make this, make this your own. So there's my kind of teal, so baby blue with like the tiniest bit of yellow. Even add a little scooch more white to lighten it. Where will I put that? I'll put that right here. Let's say you put it on there and you're thinking, mm, it's not it's not green enough for my taste. Get a teeny tiny bit more yellow. There, it's kind of like mintier. Little bits of yellow at a time, otherwise you're just gonna make green. Nice patch of like a teal there. We're starting to fill in all these all these gaps here. Um, maybe a leg. I could do a leg. Hey, 
if you're working on an easel like I am, propped up, and you're having difficulty like at the bottom, at the bottom, you could flip the whole thing around. Flip the whole thing around. It's much easier to paint something near the top like that, then kind of squishing your hand way down here. Or put it flat on the table. Flat on the table is sturdier. I like to paint flat on the table when I'm not demonstrating. Hmm, what else? Maybe like a, I'm just looking at where, what colors would look good? What's missing from this area? I'm thinking yellow, I'm thinking yellow personally. So you can go back to any of the colors we had before and throw those in there. Start filling in all the last little chunks. Okay. I'm thinking like a, a lighter lemon lime might be nice. So this is this is my yellow plus my green together. Like these two together, it makes this lovely kind of lime. That's kind of nice. That's a nice color. Um, maybe I'll do, I'll continue that color over here because it's so nice. Oh, and I can't forget those tiny, tiny hippo ears. They're so small. There we go. Um, what do I want here? Pink, 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 red. Yeah, we didn't do any like red, red sections, but uh, that's that's my choice. I just wanted to stick with kind of pinks and purples instead of reds, but you can throw in a red section. This little ear, can't forget that little ear. Okay, ear. These little baby ears. I'm thinking blue. I might use my small brush to get those little teeny tiny ears because they're so small. That's all my, yeah, I'm looking, double check. You got all the sections filled in. <clears throat> and mine's messy. Mine's not perfectly tidy. Don't worry about rough edges. All right, get a little rinse. Double check any thick globby areas are smoothed out flat. Thick globs, smooth them down. I'll give you another minute on the those shapes, those patches, and then we're gonna do our second coat on our background because that's nice and dry. Nice and dry all around so we can add our second coat with no worries about like a gray, colorful, smudgy mess happening. Giggle Girls using pencil crayons, awesome. Good idea. Yeah, so if I was using pencil crayons or markers or something, I would draw out 
and probably draw out all my patterns and then color everything in because it'd be hard to you know color all of this blue and then try to put yellow pencil crayon on top so you'd probably have to do a little more pre-drawing because you can't layer it as much as as paint Okay, again, if you need some more time, just hit pause and, and catch up with us. So I'm gonna use reds, oranges, a little yellow in the background on top of the gray. But if you wanna go with greens and blues to give you more of a jungle vibe, like maybe like my jumper here is kind of greens and blues, would be a jungly kind of vibe. Um, yeah, any colors, any colors, even just one color. If you wanna just do dark dark blue and light blue, bless you, anything, anything you wanna do at all. I'm gonna use my medium brush, medium square brush. Um, and my brush strokes are kind of crissy crossy, diagonals. Yeah, all of them are kind of diagonal. There's not really any straight horizontal or like straight up and down vertical ones. They're all kind of crisscross, overlapping whatever I felt like doing, visible brush strokes. Uh, how long will this take? We're, we're aiming for about two hours for this tutorial. About two hours. So here's some red. Get some red. You don't need like a ton of paint on your brush. And just literally like deep, deep, deep. All these little brush strokes anywhere, anywhere you want them. It looks funny at first, it looks kind of funny. But we're gonna fill it in with more, more and more and more. So not a whole lot of paint on your brush, we still don't want thick globs. So even though I'm doing like fast like swipes, they're still pretty, pretty thin, not thick. When you have like enough red, throw a little yellow on your brush. And with the red on your brush already, you get a little orange. Or if you have some orange still on your, on your palette, these can crisscross, overlap right next to, right below. Different shades of orange, light orange, dark orange. Even when I like swipe on top of some of my red, I pick up a little red, wet red, and then my next swipe might be a two-tone, a two-tone orange. If your paint is a little bit, a little bit see-through like mine, you could add a little white, add a little white to whatever color you're doing. Add a little white to the orange, to your red, to your yellow, and it'll kind of like stand out a little more with a little white mixed in. I definitely am gonna add white into my yellow. My yellow's very see-through. It's just fun. You don't really have to think about where every little brush stroke goes. Just, just let your hands do all the work. My, turn off my brain. Don't, don't think about this. I went a little bit on my ear. That's okay. We're going to put like stripes or patches and that'll hide any little Little boo-boos, little mistakes that I make. We don't make mistakes. It's orange. Get some yellow going here. I don't even wash my brush. Between colors, I don't wash my brush. I just load it up with some more of the next color. And that way I get, I get some kind of cool blends. Orange, yellow. 
reddish orange. Get as, get as close to your little animal shapes as you can. If there's, you know, a little bit of a gap around, that's fine. That's okay. Green might look nice in here too. Uh, pink, purple. We have we have still like remnants of all the colors we just used. So if you want to throw in any other colors, do so. I'm just gonna really just keep going till I am happy with like how much gray is covered. But if you're already at that point where you think you've got enough, let it dry. Stop painting, let it dry. Or if you want like more coverage. Oh, didn't even get in here. Right in there. This kind of reminds me of like a woven basket texture, kind of. So I'm planning to do um, another butts painting in this series. Um, it's going to be barnyard butts. I'm excited for that one. So maybe look for that one. Um, maybe in August, maybe September, but yeah, I'm going to do a barnyard butt version. I think that'd be cute. But you could even do it on your own if you want to like do it sooner, do a barnyard version of this sooner than Sooner than my event. Yeah, just do the same steps, but with barnyard animals, barnyard colors, whatever you feel like is a barnyard color. Okay. Um, mine's starting to get pretty full. What I like to do when, you know, things are looking almost like I wanna have them, I will pick it up. I will hold it like far away from my body just to get like a different, perspective like further away so I can notice things like well I completely missed this spot here so I can just kind of go a few in there what if I'm noticing I need more yellow on this side versus that side anything that you miss by looking at it up close like what less than a foot from my face you notice things differently when it's further away so look at it step you know step away step back and then look at it with, with fresh eyes. But mine's looking pretty good. I like the amount of color I have and the amount of gray still showing a little bit. That's important to have a little gray peeking out. Uh, yeah, I think I will be satisfied with that, but you can always add a few more strokes later if you want. Uh, Pamela says it reminds them of the movie Madagascar, yep. Can definitely see that we've got um the zebra i don't even remember his name chris rock marty 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 could do like the when he gets the bite on from on the butt from alex could do the bite mark marty marty and then the hippos and then the uh gloria yeah that's right that's gloria i was thinking of a giraffe as a butt option, but I didn't know how I was gonna do like the neck, what I have 
the neck going off the page or would I have the neck coming down, munching on something? So I just, I scrapped the idea of having a giraffe in this painting. Okay, give that a little wash, a little rinse, a little dry. That's looking cute. We'll give that a moment to dry. We will add a little bit more um, pattern on that, a little bit of shadows in a little while, but we got to get to work on all of our lovely patterns in here. So mine's pretty dry. Even the last color I did, yeah, pretty dry. But let's say some of your sections are still wet. If some of your sections are still wet, just do those sections last, right? But the first color we did, the yellow, should be your most dry area. So you can start maybe some patterns on some yellow and go to your orange. I'm gonna use, well, I might use a combination of medium and small, but you decide for your own painting when you wanna use medium, when you wanna use small, you can do, you can be doing stripes while I'm doing spots. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly where I'm going in the same colors I'm doing. You do you. So I have one, two, three, I have three different pattern options. Let's bring that a little closer. Eh, come here. Oh, there we go. Three different pattern options. So we have the giraffe pattern, even though I have no giraffes here. Lumpy shapes. Some are squarish, some are roundish, lumpy shapes. You can make yours more tidy if you want to be really precise with your giraffe spots. Then I've got the zebra stripe option. So thick parts, thin parts, tapering off parts, zebra option. And then I've got my um, leopard or cheetah. Uh, I think leopards, I think cheetahs have the closed spots and leopards have the open spots. I think that's how it goes. So I've got like um, the letter C shapes, but also random dots. So a dot with a C or just dot, open ovals. I just kind of mixed it up, mixed it up. Like a, there's a dot with a big letter U, I guess you'd call that. Open circle, just kind of a weird mix of dots and curves to give me my cheetah, cheetah look. There's some white on pink. And yeah, complementary colors look amazing. So like this nice rich purple with orange, that just pops. Your eye is just drawn to that. So to be able to paint a lighter color like orange on top of the purple, add white into there. You definitely need some white to help that layer on top of a darker color. Same with like when I did these, this is purple and I wanted yellow. So first I painted a white stripe, then I painted yellow on the white stripe to help it pop out. Oh, here's, here's dark blue with light blue stripes as an option. So if you wanna do like orange with then dark orange spots kind of thing. Any pattern, anywhere, any color, any amount too. So here we have giraffe spots on top of blue and on top of orange. It didn't just stop at this line. They can continue into other colors. So like this is all stripey, but different colors. It doesn't have to end when the color behind it ends kind of thing. Let's put that back over here. It's kind of falling down. Why are you falling? There we go. Any color, any brush, any anywhere. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna mix yellow and white, yellow and white so that it'll pop and be able to layer it on on anywhere. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do stripes here. So to get thicker areas, I'm pressing harder. And to get thinner areas, I just lighten up the pressure. So thick, you just 
lift off. These could be wispy. They don't have to be all perfectly like thick. Some stripies, yellow on blue, just because I felt like it. I'm gonna do yellow on. What if I do yellow on purple over here? Yeah, so because I have the white mixed in, it is standing out a lot better than just straight yellow. <coughs> Pardon me. Big ones, small ones, square ones, round ones, anywhere. So we won't be like outlining the patterns, like each spot and stripe. We'll just outline the, the animals themselves. So don't worry about having to outline every single spot. That would be, that'd be too tough. Sometimes I like to bring it like closer to me so it's like more steady. Yeah, and don't be afraid to flip it around sideways or upside down to get, you know, better access to certain areas. <coughs> <coughs> Where else do I want some yellow while I have it on my brush? Maybe like a stripey. Stripey leg. I, I suppose, yeah, on my zebra, I only did zebra stripes. But then on the other guys, I kind of mix it up. You can do whatever you want. If you want to do what I did and have only zebra stripes on this guy. But I'll probably mix it up this time around. All right, that's good on the yellow for now. I'm going to do a different color. I want a lovely blue. Um, yeah, I can demo some leopard or cheetah spots. Leopard? Let's go here. So sometimes I'll do like a dot and then kind of like a curvy C around the dot. Or it could be just a dot. Or it could be an open, open shape. Any combination of those or whatever you make up. It looks kind of weird when you're doing your first few, but then when this whole shape is filled in, then it looks more normal. People will understand what you're going for. <clears throat> yeah, you can definitely have them crossing like that border between pink and purple. That's fine.
if we want to keep going. If I want to make like fine lines, I think adding a little water into my paint, make it a little bit more liquidy, helps me with fine lines. It might help you too if you're struggling to make fine lines that aren't like bumpy from like the texture. Oh. You know what this really reminds me of? Um, when I was a kid, Lisa Frank, like stationery and stickers. And you know, there's like bookmarks and notebooks. Lisa Frank. Someone has to know what I'm talking about. Very rainbow stuff, mostly for girls. Lisa Frank, come on, someone knows what I mean. All right, so we've got some blue. Do I want to keep going? Yeah, I'll go up the whole ear. Why not? Why not? Cute. <coughs> what else needs a little, a little blue? Oh, someone's mowing the lawn next door. That's my afternoon job. Gotta go mow the lawn. We've had so much rain, let's say in the past week, and the grass is just so long. And then every time I wanna go mow it, it's raining, <laughs> making it even longer. You can really just zone out making all these shapes. You don't really have to like watch me. You can just make your own anywhere you want them. This is much more fun than mowing. You're right, Kimberly. I don't mind the mowing. Weeding, though, makes me crazy. Mowing, you're, you're, you're walking, you're getting fresh air, exercise, but weeding, you're stooped over. That's no good. A lovely giraffe pattern. Do I want some more blue somewhere? I just kind of do all my blue while I have the blue on the brush, right? Instead of washing 80 times. Um, yeah, down here. Thick, thin, whatever. Short, long. A little more. Let's go. Starting to look more wild. Safari like. All right, I'm going to go with hmm. green. Yeah, I'll go green. You can mix a darker green. Mix a lighter green. If you're going to go like a lighter lime green, say on any of these darker colors, add some white, remember? Add a little white. 
mine's kind of dark. Mm, yep. Invent your own patterns too. If you want to do like um, swirls, you want to do swirls instead of like jaguar leopard print. You want to do um, fun and zany triangles as a pattern. Zigzags. Um, hearts. Ooh, do a pattern of hearts. What else could be a, a nifty pattern? Um, like tiny dots. Some more giraffe. I definitely need some more jaguar. Let's do some more jaguar slash leopard. Oh, you're gonna be so fun. If you hide your initials or hide someone's name in these patterns or shapes, and then people have to like find, find your name, find your signature. Yeah, you could hide like a name in like some zebra stripes or something and gift it to like a kid. Some more over where, 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 over here. I'm doing green on green, dark green on light green. Uh, emoji patterns, interesting. Interesting, that's a good idea, try that. Where else? We're starting to get filled up here. Um, I'm gonna do, I've got some white. I've got some white on teal. I've got some white on pink. That's an option. Or like a very pale pastel of any of these colors. Try that. I'm gonna try some white giraffe spots. kind of stands out. I like that. If you don't like something that you do, you can paint over it. Let it dry. Paint over it with a different color. Lighten it, darken it. But definitely let it dry before you try to correct it. I want some white. Like over here.
Mm. With like tiny areas like the ears or the head here, I'm not really going to put any pattern in it because just outlining it will kind of be enough for that, let's say. So I won't do, I won't do patterns in those areas, but if your areas are bigger than mine, you could definitely add patterns on the little bitty ears, little bitty head. Um, Gurma KT says that her daughter loved Lisa Frank. Yeah, it's my generation. It's kind of like the target. So I'm in my 30s. Getting paint on my arm. Um, yeah. Okay, so this one looks good. I'm not gonna do like a pattern here. That's not really a lot of room. Patch there, patch there. Getting there, getting there. Let's do, I'm gonna do pink. Yeah, get some pink. My pink dried up, so I'm gonna make some more. What do I want, pink? Stripies. Um, over here. Maybe some of you are already done all your patterns. Maybe yours is a little smaller. And you're done. You can let it dry or you can just keep going on uh, outlining things. Outlining all those original, um, the sketch lines we did before, whether that was with pencil or with the paint. All those things we drew before is what the black lines will outline. There, the head, the one right in the head. I really liked that light blue on the dark blue I had on the head over there, so I'm gonna, we'll do that again. Light blue, white plus blue. Don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming in from the side is where I did them, a little lighter. A little lighter. light blue on dark blue. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to do the ears just right here. That's it. That's all I have. Okay. There we go. Pretty good. If you feel like you need to do like a second coat on anything, like maybe your yellow, when it dried, it looked a little greener than you wanted. You could put a second coat of white plus yellow on top of some of those. You know, any areas that you want to just like maybe over here, a little bit yellower kind of thing. Because things change as they dry too. But I'm, I'm pleased with how mine's going. 
pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I'm going to give all that a moment to dry before I start outlining, but we will do the, the kind of patch of green giraffe pattern. And then I've got a patch of blue giraffe pattern over here, just for something fun. Um, if you'd prefer to leave that off, if you'd prefer to add like um, tree leaves coming in your branches with leaves dabbed on there, palm leaves, I don't know, a uh, cool um, tribal design for a sun. A sun would look cool. Maybe birds, some cranes or heron birds flying. Um, what else? A family name. It could be the Borks. That's my last name. Um, the Smiths. Whatever you want to do in these areas or just leave it like that. You can leave it like that too, but I'm gonna make these kind of giraffe patches in my upper corner. So I've got green on the one side. So I've got some green still here. I'm using my medium brush. Here's a lovely dark green. I've got kind of like dark green, medium green, light green. Random giraffe pattern shape. So roundish, squarish. Whatever you feel like. A couple of dark ones there. And they could go right off, like right off the page. Half, half on, half off. There's some nice dark ones and we wanna have a few light ones just to mix it up a little, add a little more yellow. Add a little more white if you want. Yeah, or any other thing you can think of that you want to decorate that. Swirls. Um, maybe watch The Lion King and get inspired by that movie. Do um, Zazu flying, flying in the sky. I don't know, so I've got some green there. I'm gonna do a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna do like three shades of green. That's not much lighter. That's a little better. Um, yeah, I think that's a good amount for me. Just something, something to draw the eye up there. We will add some black um, when that's dry and when we're using black. I'm just gonna do all the black all at once. Yeah, so that's kind of cute. I'm gonna do similar patches over here with blue. But if you feel like you wanna do maybe some uh, jaguar, leopard spots, pattern swirls up here. Little rinse, little rinse, medium brush, darker to medium blue. Nice thin, even coat. As always, there's a few blue. Um, yeah, just lighten it up with a little bit of white. A few more. How many colors have we mixed today? So many different colors. You guys should be professionals 
at mixing colors by the end of this. You want a light green, boom, got it. Okay, there's a little bit of blue. I'm gonna lighten it just a little more and do a couple more. Kind of balanced, sort of, kind of, on either side. That looks good to me. If you like this pattern, you can keep going. Keep going, maybe on your next um, version of this painting, instead of these crisscrossy strokes, you could do the whole background as these kind of giraffe patterns as an option. There we go, we'll let that dry. Time for all the black outlines. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna take a while. Um, yeah, if you're at home working on an easel, it, I think it's a good idea to take it off the easel, a little sturdier on the table. You could even have it propped on your lap to help you do the, the fine black lines, but um, even flat on the table, and then you could brace your hand, you know, on a dry part. If this is flat on the table, brace your hand on a dry part, and then do these thin, fine black lines as best you can. Mine are even a little bit wibbly, wobbly. Not perfectly thin. There's thick parts, thin parts, wispy parts. Everything. Okay. The black. I've got my thin little brush. I like to add water to the paint. Anytime I'm doing thinner lines, water in my paint. Not, not so that it's like watercolors. That's too runny. And then to get my bristles, like what if your bristles are all like flayed out like this because it's an old brush, to get the bristles to come back together again, I twirl my brush, twirl my brush in my black paint as I load it up so that the bristles like come back together in a point. So just go, you know, as steadily as you can, outlining all the things that we had drawn as our sketch and we could add like the zebra's little mohawk, add like fluff to their tails, all the little details. So here's kind of my little mohawk. We could go all the way down. I thought of going all the way down, why not? Ears. It tidies things up. Even if there's little bits, like I can see a little gap of the canvas showing, that's okay. It's all right. I'm not worried. Where'd my little... I lost my knobbly knee definition, so I gotta put that knobbly knee definition back in there. You could give him a black hoof if you want at the bottom. Make it like a little black hoof if you want. Something like that. Give him a little black hoof. Hoof. Do I have a Canadian accent? Hoof, no, hoof, I don't know, what's right? Yeah, on the tails, you could give their, the tips of their tails like a little bushy, um, you know, like the end of a paintbrush, let's say. Mine's curling off to the side, but yours could be straight down. Mm 
tinggal beli ini. Yeah, a paint marker would be really good at doing these outlines. Um, maybe like a thick Sharpie, thick Sharpie marker. All right, there's my zebra butt. Zebra butt's all done. Let's go to elephant. We will, so first I'm gonna outline everything, then we will add little tiny extra little lines here and there as details. So like there's extra, say extra wrinkles here, a couple extra lines here and here. We'll do those at the end. Like. First, all the outlines. Yeah, the water with the black paint really helps smooth your lines. Let's go, I forget where this went, here. Getting my elephant like a wispy, long wispy tail, kind of scraggly. You know what animal has a really cute butt? A corgi. You need to do like a corgi butt, just like three corgis butts. And that's the painting, that's the whole painting. Would be the best painting ever. I suppose these these lines don't have to all be black. If you want to try to outline in blue, outline in white, white would really be a knockout. Give it a whole nother look. That would be neat to see. If anyone wants to try a different outline color than, than just black. I'm gonna rotate this. Rotate. Just better for my hand. Yeah, keep going. Rotate all the way. I always feel like I feel like I'm on TV when I do the YouTube live or the Facebook live events, but when I'm in the Zoom events, the ticketed events, it's more like I'm actually teaching people because some of you guys have your cameras on, you guys answer, ask questions, answer my questions. It's a little different on YouTube, but I do appreciate the, the little chat comments. Uh, rotate. <sighs> I suppose this is how Bob Ross felt because back then there wasn't Zoom, there wasn't Facebook. Okay. 
Okay, that's looking cute on the elephant. Again, we're gonna add those extra little wrinkles and stuff in a moment. I'll move on to my hippo. How will I, I guess sideways? But the butt wrinkle. Can you see the hippo? There's the, the way the butt wrinkle goes. I'll just leave it over there so you can draw your butt wrinkle. Okay, oh, the head, the tiny head. Oh, the tail. Uh, the tail. And we know what hippos do with those tails. Fling around their poop. Have you ever seen that on like National Geographic or Discovery Channel or something? The hippos just like, their tail whips around, poop flying everywhere. It's like a dominance thing maybe. Gross. Let's not let's not get into that. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. I got all my animals outlined. And then there's just a few little so yeah, a few like extra lines for like wrinkles. Thin, kind of gestural, just quick little flicks. There's a few wrinkles down here if you want to add. There's a bit of a cankle wrinkle situation there. Little bits around there, here. Maybe around the knobby knees. Yeah, just here and there, kind of thin. Oh, oh crashing into things. I need a drink. I need a drink. Thin, 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 wispy. Let's go, I'm gonna go on the tail. Mm. Even right on top of some of your patterns. His foot already is kind of, kind of stripey. Oh, a few more stripes. Mm. 
yeah, barely, barely touching the canvas with like any pressure with the brush, just very light wisps. Looking, 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 where else? Wrinkly ears. Yeah, I'm liking that. Just little details. People probably won't even notice those. And then their shadows on the ground, I just kind of did horizontal, Brushy brush strokes, wispy brush strokes. So I go beyond just their feet because like they're big animals. They would have a shadow falling like in a bigger area than just their feet, right? So we are almost done. There's a few things after these shadows. Um, and I will show you some upcoming uh, events with me. If you like my style, if you like my, my art, my way of teaching it, and you wanna tune in and see some more, I'll show you some upcoming uh, paid stuff and upcoming free stuff. What do I have coming up? I'll show you some stuff. I'll grab some stuff. Messy, I just do messy lines underneath for shadows. If you wanna do like a more controlled shadow, you definitely can. My hoofs got a little lost in the shadow, but if you wanna make your hoofs stand out a little more, you can do like kind of a outline in white, make your hoofs stand out again. Messy, 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 messy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, a little bit of black in the, the upper corners. So we did the these shapes, those are dry. Those should be dry, nice and thin, remember? We did them thin. So then I just did black, wispy, shapey lines on top of them, but not following these shapes. I just made my own shapes on top. So they don't follow the same the same pattern I did. Just, just kind of a funky modern thing I did. Wispy shapes. Not even, they don't even have to be solid. They could be like broken lines, gappy lines. Thick parts, thin parts. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna do there. A few shapes, I'll do a few more shapes on this side. I guess I could have some half, half on, half off. There we go. That's good. Some half shapes. That looks pretty good to me. That. Yeah, they're not, they're not twins, but they're sisters. Similar paintings. And I just love how that's turned out. I'm gonna sign mine. Um, really, you could pick any color because we have so many colors in this painting. Pick any color on your palette. I always use a color like from my painting to do the signature. So if, if this was a painting of a forest and it was just blues and greens and blacks, you wouldn't sign it in say like bright orange. 
I'm going to sign mine in a lovely blue. You could um, put your whole name. You could put just your initials. Um, I, I love when kids put like the age, their age. So like Chris, age 10. That kind of a thing. The year, put 2021. Um, yeah, I just got the initials in the bottom corner. Um, sometimes people sign the side, like sign the edge or the back. It doesn't have to be on the front. So there we go. I'm going to show you a few um, upcoming events with me if you're interested. Um, so on Artist Palette Durham Region, um, I'm usually the watercolor person, host. That's how I started out. Um, so my next upcoming event with watercolor is on this coming up Thursday, part of our space theme camp week. It's for kids and it's for adults, but um, definitely geared more towards kids, but adults can participate, of course. Um, yeah, it's like the galaxy is holding up the earth. And this is in watercolor. We're gonna add some salt for that kind of frosted effect in the galaxy. Lots of fun on Zoom. So it's like more one-on-one -on -one with me. I can see you if you want. Um, you could show me your art in progress and give you tips. Um, yeah, so that's Thursday during the camp week. Um, camp week is Monday to Thursday, four events uh, for one low price. Do, do, do. Coming up um, after July 15th, I want to say, and a uh, recording exclusive in watercolor, uh, the Taj Mahal. It is a monument of love. In watercolor, a recording exclusive available on our website after the 15th. Kind of doing like an around the world theme at the end of July, mid to end of July. Um, we're doing this one on Zoom paid event, July 21st, Egypt in watercolor. 21st, uh, end of July, a two in one watercolor event on Zoom. We're gonna do kind of like nature meets geometry so there's kind of like a coral reef with a kind of a geometric element to it. So that one paired with, paired with this one, um, like a cactus with geometric elements, a little bit of gold in there, kind of see the shimmer. So both of those two events, both of those two paintings in one event, July 31st, end of July. So that's the watercolor stuff. Oh, there's something. How can I, something over my shoulder, if you saw this kind of peeking at us during the event. This one is brand new. I mean, I haven't even showed Liesl or Vera this one. So I'm hoping to do this one in August. Can I bring it closer? Yeah. I'm hoping to do this as a free event in August. We don't have a date with, with that one yet, but wouldn't that be fun? for kids. It's like an artist among us mashup. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So check out our uh, Facebook page for more details. More details on that one. Um, well, let's say you're really in the painting mood and you want to do another acrylic painting and you like rainbow things. This painting Ride the Rainbow is available for free right now on YouTube. We're already on YouTube. Go back to our page, find this video, and you can do this one right now. It's already uploaded. Ready for you to try for free. Ride the Rainbow. Try that. If you like my, my style, my, my hosting. Okay, that's kind of all the stuff I have nearby to show you. Lots of stuff coming up in August and into September when it cools down a bit. Um, if you have any questions for me, type them in right now in the chat and I can I can answer them. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're, we're done on the painting. I'd love to see your versions 
Um, where's that link? I had the link above in the chat, all the way at the top. Let's see if I can pin it. Oh, I can. I pinned it. So that should kind of pop up in the chat for you. Um, yeah, take a photo. I love seeing photos of kids holding their art. That's my favorite. If they're like beaming and they're holding their art. So proud. I would love to see those. Um, let's see, any questions? You're welcome to Louisa and Nida. Thanks for joining me. Kaylee added little hairs on her elephant. I like that. Yeah, they have, they're mammals. They have like hairy scraggly bits. Um, I can't wait to see Kaylee's because I think Kaylee was saying this was her first one. So I, I can't wait to see that one. Perhaps on the Facebook. Um, I wonder how Giggle Gal's pencil crayon version turned out. Let me see that later when you're done. Thank you, Nida. Yeah, I have a very like bright rainbow style. I just like to use kind of like every color in every painting. Ooh, you know what would be fun on this? Some splats. I love chucking paint at my paintings, whether that's watercolor or acrylic. Water down a little paint, put it on your brush and kind of like splatter a little, just for fun. Or you can do um, like instead of wildly, wildly hurling your brush at it, you hold your finger and then tap, 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 tap to add some splatters. But if, uh, you know, if you're in your dining room, like I am, try to keep it controlled. Add a little, little splash of color. All right. Well, I mean, it is, it is two o'clock. Kind of plans that, plans that out. Worked out well for me. It's mowing time for me. There's no rain, so I'm going to go mow. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your Saturday, rest of your weekend, rest of your month. <laughs> have a good have a good one. And we'll maybe see you again soon. Bye guys. <laughs>